Can you exalt him in a moment and exercise your spirit to adorn his beauty? Make your heart into words and adorn him. Beautify him. Exalt him. Magnify his name. You are a wonder. You are a wonder. You are a wonder. Nesoseli mahabras kebo konde. Lia bronde si kabeso sanahambali. Yas kombra hapetoske bamile. Endores kopis kofe lantoria. Miska brante kosile. You are a wonder. And we exalt your great name. We magnify you. Eternal in the heavens. The bright and the morning star. You are a wonder. We worship the wonder that you are. Oh great one. Mesko babariske. Liabron de skido boko sami. La hai compresco filahandeli. Leto presco falantora. Isca mateli nandeli. Brokos kabalaite. Isco brento korea. You are a wonder. And we give you glory. And we give you praise. In Jesus. Mighty name. We pray. Amen. You are a wonder. You make yourself manifest in us in ways that human words cannot describe. And when we look upon you, the way you rise in our spirit to strengthen us with might by your spirit in our inner man, it is a wonder. Today we are done your majesty. We are done your goodness. We'll make our heart into words and we pour it upon you like the alabaster that you might be exalted in our midst. O oh, thou that sits eternal in the heavens, be thou glorified. We have come with our insufficiencies. We have come with our limitations. We have come to draw strength from you. So that the least among our numbers will become as strong as David. That the things that weigh people down in this territory would not have the impetus to weigh us down. Because your strength is made manifest in us. Our life doesn't go the way of the normal man of this land because your spirit is our secret oh my god we worship your wonder let your name be glorified in jesus mighty name we pray please make someone welcome to church today i know you traveled long to be here but before we are done, you will forget your transport money. You will forget the price you had to pay to be in the house of God. Hallelujah. All right, we stopped at Job chapter 33 verse 4 yesterday. Job chapter 33 verse number 4. And there are two major things in the book of Job 33 verse 4. The Bible says the Spirit of God had made me and the breath of the Almighty had given me life. In Job chapter 33 verse 4 we see a new layer is added. Because if you are following in the teaching in the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 5 the Bible says that he formed man out of the dust of the ground and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Hallelujah. So, there is a life of the soul 
that became the result of the release of the breath of life. It established the life of the soul. The life of the soul is what we call human life. That's where your intellect is seated. That's where your emotion is seated. That's where your capacity to make choices is seated. So it's the life of the soul that was activated on the account of the release of the breath of life. Unfortunately for us, when we yielded to the devil in Adam and humankind experienced a fall, we were now therefore sentenced to live by the soul. At that point, we were a living soul. And because we're a living soul, the next stage of our development will require that we exercise our will to choose the choices of God. Are you with me? We had to exercise our will to choose the choices of God. So you find God coming into the garden and unveiling his choices to man. You will find Satan coming into the garden in the book of Genesis chapter 3. Unveiling the kind of choices he will want man to, to make. The moment you become empowered in your soul, the ground for warfare has been set in motion. You might find that we have dogs and cats and kangaroos. And Satan is not so concerned about dogs and cats and kangaroos. The reason is because they do not have the kind of soul that we have. Yes, it is true that a demon can possess a cat. Because demons are persons without bodies. And in order for them to function in, the three, in this three-dimensional frame of reference, they will need to have a line sense to function. And that's why they want to possess something. But demons will want to possess human beings much more than cats. For the same reason why you may want to have, um, I don't know how long it has been. But there is, those days in the 80s, there used to be a vehicle called Volkswagen Beetle. Do you know Volkswagen Beetle? Yes, sir. Ah, the people that grew up in Austria will not know what I'm talking about. I saw a modern one today on the road. That's not what I'm talking about. It's the ancient Volkswagen Beetle. In fact, it is known for the dynamics of its gear. Because when you want to engage the gear, the gear has a will of its own. It can decide to accept the, your effort or not. So in a Volkswagen Beetle, we cannot guarantee expression. Maybe you want to go 160. Volkswagen Beetle has its own will. It will determine how, how much speed it can make available to you at a certain time. And if you are not friendly with the brake, you might have a lot of testimonies to share on the book. <laughs> That's the kind of limitation a demon faces when it possesses an animal like a dog. It doesn't have expression. There's too much friction. The energy is transmitting, it's not translated into its intention. And so he wants to possess a human being because a human being is like a Rolls Royce. With a Rolls Royce, you have all the kind of expression that you need. Even though I've not driven one before, I don't know how it looks like. But there's expression. That's why you want a better car because you want to be able to express yourself as you navigate on the highway. And so you find Satan, are you there? Yes, sir. Coming into the garden to provide counsel to man. And the reason why Satan considers man to be a destination of interest is because he's now a living soul. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, unfortunately for me, I was called up to conduct a wedding. And... Um, 
there are some kind of messages they preach on weddings. You know, it's customary for you to like to impress the couple and preach something so sweet. But I'm not that kind of preacher. I was raised in the wilderness. Yeah, hallelujah. So when I come there, I tell you what the Lord is saying. And many times, uh, it's not what people want to hear. So I, unfortunately for me, I was invited to preach in a wedding. I prayed about it, and the Lord led me to the book of Genesis chapter 2 and Genesis chapter 3. And I began to reveal to the congregation, to the people that were wedding, that God had created a garden, set up a habitat for man. Are you there? Yes, sir. Now, just like the habitat for fish is water, and if you take man, fish out of its habitat, it will struggle for life. It's not, it's not modified to be able to survive outside of his habitat. So you put every creature in their habitat, and the habitat that was made available for man was a place, not a place, a location. It's different. A place is different. A location called Eden. Are you there? Yes, sir. Eden. It's an environment, okay. An environment called Eden. It's much more of an environment than it is a location. Eden is an embassy. It's a part of heaven that finds expression on earth. Are you there? Yes, God didn't need a visa to visit the earth when Eden was in place because it was part of his territory that found expression in human territory. It was only in Eden that God visited man. And the kind of visitations that took place in Eden was one-sided. We were never told that Adam could visit God. It was only God that came to visit man. There are so many... Are you there? Yes. Now, so the question, now, if you are following, if it's true, you are following. Why is it that Adam could not visit God and only God could visit him? That's the question. Who wants to help? I know you don't like my questions. I know it. So I will not even ask them. Let's, let's just leave them. So only God visited man. Man could not visit God. And the reason why man could not visit God was because man did not have the life of God. So he could not engage in the journeys of the spirit. He was localized to space and time, and only God could gravitate in his direction. But that was not the ultimate intention. Man was still in the process of making. But the reason why God had to visit him quickly, the reason why demons had to visit him quickly was because he was now a living soul. And he's likely to reason out everything that forms the basis of the choices he makes. And what will determine his lines of development will be occasioned by the choices he makes. So what the devil is, the reason why he will not live your life is because he wants you to make the wrong choices. And you make the wrong choices every day. And as long as you make the wrong choices, you extend the influence of the devil over your life. If you go to the book of Zechariah, you will find some angels with measuring instruments. And these angels are active every single day, measuring and measuring and measuring and measuring. Then I began to wonder, what are they measuring? It's you and me. The moment you make a right decision, the influence of God upon your life extends, so they measure the new, the new measurement. That, that measurement is the, is the current value of your spiritual possibility then you now move in the flesh and take other decisions that empower the devil. And they measure again, you have lost ground. And the reason why those angels are always engaged is because we are unstable. So they have something to measure. They have a new measurement tomorrow. They have a new measurement next tomorrow because you are unstable. Because I'm unstable. The mind-bending attempts of Satan will never cease because you became a living soul. So he can reason with you. He can hack into your thoughts and begin to think his thoughts in your mind and you will think you are the one thinking. Now, uh, now we have an instrument here, the keyboard. 
Can you see how quiet the keyboard is? The reason is because nobody is playing it. Yeah. Unfortunately for you, your mind cannot be this quiet. Can't be this quiet. Most of you think that thought you thought was your thought. You didn't know that demons were responsible for mind bending. Yes, because you are now a living soul. So 90% of your temptations, your attacks, will come through your mind. And the devil will masquerade and make you think you are the one thinking. Mm-hmm. Strike a chord there. It's taking you so long. No, okay, so he has struck a chord. Stop, 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 stop. Satan can be the one playing the organ of your thoughts. Part of the reason why we must gain proficiency in the study of the word of God is so that we can we can understand the voice of the word of God. There is no way you can understand the voice of God if you don't understand the voice of the word of God first. You cannot do um, um, additional mathematics if at no point in your life you learned one, two, three. Because all mathematics is based on one, two, three. If you don't know one, two, three, you cannot do additional mathematics, you cannot do algebra. In order for you to know the voice of God, the first training you must develop is to train yourself to do business in scriptures until you know the voice of scripture. It's when you have known the voice of scriptures that you have the capacity to know the voice of God. And if by any means you are bereaved of the knowledge of the voice of God, then it means all the choices you've been making has been by the influence of the devil. Satan doesn't need to wear a red suit the way you see him with horns for him to influence your life. No. He just hacks into your thoughts. Gives you so seeds on your soul. And he keeps doing it so frequently that you think you are the one doing it. Do you still remember the woman with the issue of blood? Uh, no, the woman... That was bent over for 18 years. Yeah. When Jesus came as a physician and gave us the diagnosis of her condition, he said the reason that the, what is responsible is a spirit of infirmity. It means that that spirit was there for 18 years. The spirit did not go on break. The spirit did not go on vacation. The spirit did not say, let me visit Spain. He held her. for it. That's how committed demons can be. That's how committed demons can be. And the reason why demons will never leave your space is because you are a living soul. It has created a ground for warfare, a ground for battles. Satan doesn't mind you reading medicine, becoming a consultant. You are a family physician. You are a gynecologist. He doesn't mind that. Because the knowledge of gynecology cannot lead you to life. It can give you a job. It can make you financially sufficient. It can provide opportunities for you and platforms for you. And at the end of the day, you have a better living condition because you studied gynecology. That's all you have. It is limited to space and time. If God wanted you to operate as a creature of space and time, he would not have given you a spirit. Man became a living soul. Don't forget. That's where the troubles began. I don't have time. I should have taken us to Genesis chapter 2 and shown us the sound of the voice of God. How does it sound? Because you can run some judgments on what you are thinking to know if it's God that is responsible for your thoughts or not. But that's not part of the lecture. There's a very serious lecture. Maybe we'll just do that briefly as we hop into the lecture. But, uh, okay, what's the time? Aha. Uh-huh. Today is uh, what day of the week? 
Ah, it's a good day. Hallelujah. Okay, come with me quickly. Genesis chapter 2. I'm trying to ensure that all of us are in church. That's why I'm reading all this scripture. This is not my scripture for the evening. It's an attempt to bring you to church. Some of you, you're, you lost money using the bus. So you're still, you're still with money. You're still troubled about the euros. All right? We need a lot of effort to get you to concentrate and to to steady your mind on the counsel of God. We need a lot of effort to achieve that. So because of that, we will uh, be going into some scriptures first, just to draw your attention. When we have succeeded, then we can start teaching. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Put it on the screen for me. This is God's first attempt to educate the mind of man. Because at this time, he's a living soul, so the strength of his consciousness was captured in his mental faculty. You are capable of analysis through your mind. You are capable of choices through your will. You are capable of emotions. That's why you are not a robot. And the seat of that is your emotion. But the lead organ of your soul is your mind. The moment you get convinced in your mind, you, your emotion and your will will follow suit. So Satan's business is mind business. You can see a believer burning for God, so living a holy life, and then Satan now takes that person as a project, begins to feed the mind. And then very soon, the person becomes comfortable watching pornography. And he doesn't see anything wrong with it. Deception are taking place. The mind, the, he has worked on it. You're not with me. I know as a pastor of your caliber, you must have seen several people that were burning for God that changed instantly. Because they did not know that they had to protect their mind. Do you realize, are you there? All the vital organs of your body are protected. God created the skull to protect your brain. God created the rib cage to protect your heart and your lungs. God created the vertebra column to protect the spinal cord. But he said, you have to keep your own heart with all diligence. I have no protection for your heart. Out of that heart are the issues of spiritual life. In fact, are you there? Yes, sir. In fact, the word issues in Hebrew is the same word translated boundary. So, it means as you are sitting now, if God comes and reads the configuration of your heart, he knows how far you can travel in destiny with your current heart configuration. So he doesn't look on the outward, he looks on the heart. If God wants to help you, what he will do is that he will shake your environment so much that he will shake your heart. So when he shakes your heart, he will adjust your possibilities. The greatest destiny encounters that men have Rock the environment. It unbalances. You are more vulnerable when you are at peace. Because when you are at peace, the, the voice of deception can sell more. You are right. I have electricity. I have pipe bomb water. The train, in fact, the train, one of the bus stops is just before my house. So when I Step out from my room and step into the train. Life is easy for me. Glory, hallelujah. 
Do you realize that the best prophets were not in town? They were in the wilderness. Because there's so much distraction in town. Satan has a lot of advantage to get your mind to stray away from God when there's so much activity. Oh, you're not here. Wise people that stay in town would take retreats, days off, so that they can go to a place that is quiet and commune with God. If you have done that for a long time, even if you are in town, you'll be insulated from the hostel, the hostel and bustle. And you can keep your mind straight. It's a discipline you cannot learn for less than 10 years. Most of you are already creatures of the cities that you are dwelt in. The city has shaped you so much, you don't even know yourself anymore. Because Satan has been visiting you the same way God has been visiting you. And one of the reasons why you need to pay your, the price to come to church and be afflicted by the word of God is so that your mind, that your mind that is infested by demonic activity can have an op opportunity again to contemplate the words of God. Oh, you don't see yourself in warfare yet. That's why you are deceived. John the Baptist was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth unto the Israel of God. Are you there? Yes, sir. All right, so God now shows up in the garden, and this is what God said. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. And the Lord took the man and put him into the garden of Eden. Then he tells us why. To dress it and to keep it. Whenever you hear the voice of God, one of the things that the voice of God points to is purpose. Your assignment. It is very easy for you to lose touch with the fact that you are sent to earth as a messenger of heaven with an assignment to accomplish. God is not a president. God is not a chancellor. God is not a prime minister. God is not an elected official. God runs a kingdom. And when God speaks, his words become law. And he himself becomes subject to the things that he has said. There's nothing more powerful, nothing more eternal than the words that God has spoken. Because heaven and earth shall pass away. But not one jot, not one tittle of his word will fall to the ground without finding accomplishment. So in the struggle of life, in the navigations of life, you became a medical doctor. Hallelujah. If all your life does on earth is medical doctor, it means in the eyes of men you were a champion. But when you go back to God and the books are open, you might find out that you are worthy of detention. So the devil comes and makes you comfortable with a mundane existence. A mundane life, an everyday life that is compatible with the ideology of your society. That's what it does. And it makes you feel at home with it. And if you don't ever get to hear the voice of God, you will never know that beyond that thing you are doing, there is a purpose that you must strive for. To accomplish. Are you there? Yes, so the first thing that the voice of God reveals is purpose. So that you don't get lost in the maze of Vienna. In the maze of Amsterdam. In the maze of Brussels. 
and you're just looking for navigation pathways. And then when you now say, let me rest, you're already 67 with gray hair. Because you've been in that maze for so long and you never knew that it was a mind-bending experiment to waste your life on that which is frivolity. Are you there? Yes. Sorry, I'm not called to preach babes for two babes. Huh? I'm not called to preach to new converts. So I don't know how to make it look sweet. <laughs> I've been cast out many times, you know. <laughs> but this is how I am. I'm called to proclaim a revival. And if you are going to be the pavement through which a spirit being is going to influence his authority, then you must know the way of sacrifice. That's the dialect of the spirit realm. It's called sacrifice. So when you hear me rebuke, I'm not doing it out of a sense of superiority. It's a burden. I've been afflicted. I couldn't sleep yesterday night when I left here. It's like a prophet crying. So may you not be offended with my ways. All right? May God open your eyes to see the body that is in the heart of the preacher. Amen. Are you here? Yes, sir. Purpose. That's the first thing his voice reveals. I want there to be a lecture. If I read, I easily comprehend. So I felt that the best way to actualize my potential was to be in the educational system. It would be very easy for me to, pick, to get a master's degree, to do a PhD, and maybe do a second PhD. And the reason why I wanted to do that, first of all, I knew I had the mental capacity to do it. But in addition to that, I had another capacity that not so many people have. I can cram, I can retain, I can read 250 pages and retain it in my head. So my lecturers thought I was cheating. So they used to isolate me from the class and say, you write your own stuff here. Didn't change anything. Because of that ability I had, I don't know if I still have it. I used to have it, okay? I don't know if I still have it. So I wanted to be a lecturer because of that. And the reason is because I can cram the note and come to class and give them notes without a notebook. That's my real reason. I had the mental capacity to do that. And God saw that I will not stop trying to achieve that. So he helped me. One day I had crammed the whole book. I came into the hall. Then he touched my head. Then I forgot everything. <laughs> you see, in God's dealings, are you, are you still following what I'm saying? Yes. In God's dealings, he will fight against anything that has become your confidence that is not him. This is the aspect of, the, of Christianity that preachers don't preach anymore because they want to make people feel good. You don't know what it means to walk with the spirit being. You don't know it. You come and tell a spirit being, I will follow you. I will love you. I will serve you. Then you want to love something else. You have set yourself up. Oh, you don't know. Spirits are so jealous. Their hand will fight you. Yes, you will become miserable because you came and gave a vow, a vow of fools, a sacrifice of fools. No matter how ignorant you claim to be, if I take you to Nigeria, there are spiritual places, demonic places, and you go there and say, eh, meanwhile, you claim to be an Austrian, so you don't know. Huh? So you go there, and you came to the shrine of, of Shongo, and then you, you bring out 3,000 pounds and say, I heard you live here. Take. And then you came back that evening. I say, I changed my mind. Then you take the 3,000 pounds back. Even if you are ignorant, that spirit will haunt you all your life. I was sitting on my own. You came and troubled me. Now you. 
Halleluja. Don't make a sacrifice of fools. So Satan wants you to submit to him completely. And the way he intends to achieve that is that he's going to bend your mind to accept his ideology. An ideology that establishes you as the chieftain and establishes you as God. So you don't need to seek God anymore. He puts you in a supreme position. And it deceives you to believe that you can survive that way. What he has achieved is that he has, he has measured you into time. You can only be relevant in this world, but you'll be totally relevant in the world that is to come. Why all this? Because you became a living soul. So when God spoke, the first thing a voice revealed was purpose. So it was in the place of prayer that God now revealed to me, young man. Meanwhile, he did that forgetting. Do you know that forgetting stuff that I just spoke about? He did that in five of my examinations. That was when he got, me, he got my attention. It, God has been stretching forth his hand around you to get your attention. For, for some of you, for seven years, he touched something. He was hoping that you would stand back and say, hey. Speak, Lord, thy servant hear it. But for seven years, you have not been able to stand back. You are just moving like a locomotive. <laughs> Convey your belt. So he got my attention. After the fifth time, then I went to look for him. What is happening? Why have you abandoned me? He said, no, I have not abandoned you. But I came to tell you that of all the writings written about you in heaven, there is no one that says you are a lecturer. Are you there? Yes, sir. Then all my efforts in that direction, and I saw how much I put in so that I could prove to people that I was intelligent. You will be living for people if, you don't, if God does not encounter you. You'll be living for your generation. Living to show them that I'm a smart guy. I'm the guy. If God does not encounter you, all the resources he has made available to you will be squandered on the altar of vanity. He said, it is not written concerning me that I'm a lecturer. So what is written? That was when God was able to have the discussion he wanted to have with me for a very long time. He said, your lot and your portion will be in the teaching of the scriptures. The reason why I gave you that mental capacity is, is because of the scriptures, not because of chemistry. I wanted to... I was wrong. The reason for that beauty of yours is not what you think. You got it wrong. And Satan is using the very resources that God has given you to become the object of your stumbling. Very object of your stumbling. So when I knew the reason for which I had the endowment, I spent my years studying the Bible. First of all, 15 years straight studying the Bible. Because if, if I were to get, become a professor, are you there? Yes, sir. I will put in about 15 years of study in order for me to be a professor. So the same kind of study that someone that is a professor has put into learning is what I put into the Bible. 15 years straight, first. So I did human mechanical studies. After seven years, I discovered that if the author of the book doesn't open it, it doesn't matter how much of mental exertion you put into it. Then I now discovered that before 
I will study the Bible profitably. I need to have an encounter with the author. Because the author contains much more than is written in the book. In the book of Luke chapter 4, the Bible said that Jesus took the scroll and he read out a portion. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. So the errand of the anointing on his life was defined. For he has anointed me to preach the good news to the captive, the opening of the eyes of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bound, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. When he read that portion of scripture, the Bible says, then he closed the book and gave it to the minister. Are you with me? That minister will go home with the book now and try to read, but he, he doesn't know that the book was closed before they gave it. <laughs> Many of you are trying to read a closed Bible. And that's why you are not getting anything from it. Then he closed the book and he did what? He gave it to the minister. You will need to have a discussion with Jesus in order for the book to be open. We are reading a closed book. It's only making sense to your brain. It's not, it's not affecting your heart. And if God cannot affect your heart, he cannot change your life. He cannot. He closed it. Is your Bible closed? You have all kinds of Bible apps. You have Bible Tree. You have Bible AI. You have Bible. But the book is closed. And so that, a pastor came to me and said, hey, I now know the secret behind your teaching ministry. You have a lot of resources. I said, it's true. I have. He said, come and give me all the resources. So I gave him encyclopedia. Britannica, I gave him Power Bible CD, I gave him all kinds of concordances and commentaries and theological. He came back after two weeks <laughs> and told me that he's confused. <laughs> because the book was closed before they gave him. For seven years, I didn't know I was laboring on a closed book. After seven years, I said, ah, I had to have a discussion with Jesus. It was in that discussion with Jesus that the book became open. I preached that open book for 12 years. And on the 12th year, Jesus came to me and said, teach now. I said, wait. What have I been doing? <laughs> mm. First of all, he will open it to you. Then he will come again to open it so that people that hear you will be able to hear, hear him through you. Many of us took off like a tornado. Without meeting with the author of the book to open it to you and to open it to them that you minister to through your ministry. Most people don't stay enough with him. They think ministry is performance. There's no human ability that can equip you for ministry. Because if he closes the book, you'll be preaching a closed book. And the evidence will be that the people you preach to will not see any light of transformation. So the first thing that the voice of God reveals is purpose. Second, Genesis 2, 16. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou shalt freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely 
The second thing that the voice of God establishes is government. He, he regulates you to limit your oppression. So that you don't wander into territories where his grace cannot cover you. See, of every tree of the field, you can eat freely. But of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, thou shalt not eat thereof. Government is being established. You will notice um, 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 the tone changes and God commanded, you see, because he wants to establish government. My question to you today is when last did God command you? Can you be commanded? Are you sure? Sister? When last did he command you? Because if he has not been commanding you, he doesn't believe, he doesn't think you are part of his army. Because the moment you become part of his army, you will be afflicted with commands. Does he command you? Every day he does to me. And his greatest area of command to me is an area of money. Give her 1,000 euros, send these euros, send that here, send this one here, send this to this pastor, send that to this one, send that. Yes. Almost every single day. I can tell you from the statistics of my work with God that in the eyes of God, giving is a big thing. It's a big thing. I'd like you to hear it very well. Because none of us will be here forever. The ledger of your giving life will be open to you. Uh, hallelujah. Commands. Let me show you something. Can you go to the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1? Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. Not 9, but 1. O N E. 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Stay with me. It's only the apostles that he chose that he gave commandments. So if he's not giving you commandments, he has not chosen you. He will establish his government over the life of anyone that he chooses. And when he establishes government on your life, you, know, you cannot do what you want. No. I, I know because the human nature is stubborn, that falling nature. And maybe he gave you a commandment, you violated it, then you will suffer for two years. Then wisdom will come to you and say, mm, it's not wise, violating his authority. So you stand in line. If he has not chosen you, he will not command you. And it is possible for you to become comfortable with a situation that you are supposed to weep about. He gave commandments unto the apostles he has chosen. God can come to me and say, you just empty your bank account and put the money there. He does it many times to me. I no longer survive based on the status of my bank account. Long, I left that realm long ago. Long ago. Go and pick up the son of that widow and see him through school. From secondary school to university and nobody will know about it. Just my wife that knows everything. Command. The commandments that the Holy Spirit will give you are not commandments that your flesh likes. 
Your f- flesh wants to be by the beach. <laughs> with with, um, with bikini running with a candlestick. That's what your, your flesh wants. <laughs> May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> That's what your flesh wants. Then God will now begin to regulate your life through commandments. And the flesh doesn't want it. But because you choose Jesus, you choose his commandments. And the flesh is angry. The flesh will revolt. In fact, demons will come and make you feel lonely in your soul. As an attempt to implicate you so that you can violate the government of God. But when, when it happens, I tell the devil, you know what? I saw you before I chose Jesus. You were there. And I bypassed you and went to choose Jesus. And I'm not about to change my mind now. Satan has had a very hard time dealing with me. Very terrible moments. Very hard time. If you are weak in your convictions, you become a slave. It means you were never allowed an opportunity to make a choice that was good for your soul. So the second thing that the voice of God does is that it establishes government. That's when you become his man. He can trust you because you have decided to allow his government to reign over your life. Now, listen to me. I, you know, yesterday I, I, I saw some of your trains. and I don't know what happened uh, by the way and uh, the trains could not move. Something happened. So I saw the guys that drive the trains. Wonderful guy, good guys, okay? If you are in one of those trains and the Lord opens your eyes and you see your driver in the realm of the spirit, are you there? And when you see him in the realm of the spirit, you discern through the Holy Ghost that this one is called to be an evangelist. Are you there? Yes, sir. The reason why he may never be an evangelist, even though he's called to be an evangelist, is that if God cannot exercise his authority over your life. God's divine purpose for your life can never come to pass. I know you didn't hear that. Let me, let me tell you again. If God cannot exercise his authority over your life, God cannot accomplish his divine purpose through your life. Cannot. Cannot. It is when God begins to exercise his authority over your life that he begins to make you like what he intended. It means people may never see the real you until your days are accomplished. If you don't become deliberate about operating under the authority of the word of God and under the authority of the spirit of God. He gave commandments unto the apostles that he has what? Chosen. So why do you on campus now he comes to you and say keep your vessel for me. That's his commandment. And the moment he says that all the young men on campus they start asking you for sex. In the morning you'll be in the in lecture one with like Everywhere becomes crazy. The chosen will always abide by commandments. You don't start living until you start complying with commandments. That's true life, true living. Right there? So let me show you something quickly. Before we run away. Do you realize in the garden of Eden. What exactly did God offer man? What was he offering man? Now this is the. This is the blueprint. This is the conception. This is the policy. Let us make man. In our own image. And after 
our likeness and let them have dominion. See? Let them have authority. Authority to regulate the physical realm. What God was offering man was a kingdom, a place in his kingdom to be a functionary. And the moment he finds that place in his kingdom to be a functionary, he'll be able to exercise the authority of the kingdom. Hey there. There's a dimension of authority you exercise. Oh my God. Oh my God. There's a dimension of authority God can commit to you. Millions of euros will come to your life. Not because God wants you to have a change of wardrobe every year. But because he has made you a steward to channel resources so that his agenda upon the earth can prosper. And that doesn't matter whether you have a brilliant business idea or not. What is responsible for your capacity it is, is something of the kingdom that was committed into your life. Are you there? Yes, sir. So it was the kingdom of God that Adam lost in the fall. The possibility of participating in the kingdom of God is what he lost. It was not his pause that he lost. His pause. Because a preacher of this generation would like to make you think that the goal of Christianity is to make people have money in their pocket. It was not his pause that God lost. It was his opportunity to participate in the kingdom that God lost. Those people don't need to come to church in order for them to have euros. But if they ever stumble on the kingdom, then it means that they had contact with the body of Christ. Are still with me, say amen. amen. Okay, now time is going, and I don't have the opportunity. I've not had the opportunity to start with my scripture for the night. Even though you have you have successfully come from the market, those of you that were in the market, you have, yeah. you have successfully arrived, which is very good. The second thing the voice of God reveals or establishes is His government, is His. Authority. The question I need to ask you is who is your king? Who is your king? Do you have a king? One that calls the shots, one that, that gives instructions, one that manipulates your life according to his will. And if you if you there is no man that doesn't have a king, let me tell you. Satan must have deceived you to make you yourself your king. You decide what you want. That state of self. Is defiance, is rebellion, is sin. Now that's the same thing, the same question, the same challenge with Lucifer. He said, I will ascend into heaven. He said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount in the congregation. He wanted to serve self, and he did not want to serve his king. So the key to sin is self. Anytime there's self, there's sin. Because sin means missing the mark. And the mark of man is God. You were created in his image. You were created in his likeness. So that you can function like him. And that means if we want to judge your compliance, we need to look at him first. Do your works look like him? If they do not look like him and they are works of men, you missed the mark entirely. Are you here? Okay. Number three. Go back. Genesis chapter two. Now, I think if you, if you respect this congregation and you respect God, you will not allow your phone distractors. Now, let me tell you a story. I know you, don't, you have not come close to Shakina. Let me tell you a story. I gave an instruction when I was teaching somewhere in Nigeria. Don't allow your phone distractors. Somebody 
somebody insulted me in her heart when I said that, and she became dumb. I know you have not come close enough to him. That's why you are not afraid of him. He couldn't speak. Okay. I am warning you, that person that is, I'm warning you. Because when it happens, I will be powerless about that matter. I've warned you. I've warned you. I've warned you. It's on record. You can come to church and go back down. It will not be the preacher's fault. It's because you did not discern what was there. You played with God for so long that you don't know his honor. Sometimes the angels he sends to defend his people are more zealous. They can put an end to your speaking. They can make you blind. I've seen a little of that. I've warned you for the last time. Now, so the Lord established government. He revealed purpose. He established government. And then he gave him a revelation that he did not know. Right? Gave him spiritual knowledge. He said, the day you eat of this food, ye shall surely die. Are you there? Yes, sir. Oh, you are not with me. You see, in the ecosystem that God created, are you following? Yes, sir. In the ecosystem that God created, you realize that death was standing at the boundary, but man did not know. Boundary of that ecosystem. And whether or not death becomes part of a civilization will be dependent on just a stray action. And there to become a legitimate inhabitant of his realm. Right where you are, there is darkness so close to you, closer to you than you ever thought. Just one action will open the door to darkness. Just one. Are you following? Yes, sir. All right. So I, when God showed me a vision that I will be preaching in the village that he sent me to preach. I know you don't know what a village is. Do you know what a village is? Because everywhere in Austria is good. The roads are paved. I've been, I've been trying so hard to find a pothole in your city. Just so hard and I've not succeeded since I came. So I'm from the village, okay? Yeah. And that's why I'm not too refined. I'm raw. Because I come from the wilderness. When God was sending me to that village to become a preacher, a messenger of light, I went to him. Because I saw something. And what did I see? Pastors in that city don't live long. They die. And I just had, I just married my wife. And the last thing she will want to think of is that her husband died. She would die. So I went to him and said, how, do you, how can I live long here? And he told me. Say, make sure you do not commit adultery. <laughs> hey, Jesus. The moment you touch a woman. Huh? So as you are seeing those women, they are, they are very tall. You know what is moving there? It's death. <laughs> <laughs> you are not following me. He's he, he saying the day you eat of this food, you will not know that death exists. But the day you eat of this food, a new regime begins. An individual that is not supposed to be in your civilization will become legitimately an inhabitant in your life. He 
said, if you can stay without touching them. Can you see the woman of the land? I said, yes. They are very well looking. Say, oh, yeah. <laughs> Do not touch any one of them. So I now started a fast. Do you know, Lord, that I don't have the ability to decide not to touch them? So can you help me? That, that became the object of a fast for a long time. Then he came. Then my righteous, he gave me a covenant. My righteous right hand will sustain you. Because in that same environment where God placed you, death is standing at the sidelines looking for how to hack into your realm. And some of you went to look for death. Death was not even close to you. You traveled. You went in search of it. You brought death into your environment. And since then, your ecosystem has been a roller coaster. You need to repent today. I say, I'm sorry. If you lose the virtue of sincerity in the presence of God, then your wilderness journey will be extended until old age. Those were the three things revealed in the voice of God. Are you there? Yes. We are still talking about the mind-bending activities. God comes to bend your mind so that you can do his will. And Satan too is given an opportunity to bend your mind. It means because you are a living soul, you are an attraction to God and to Satan. So somebody said, no, if we don't trouble Satan, if we hide in our environment, if we just look too late, the day Satan wants to come, you will hang your clothes on the line. You know, you just wash them. You want to dry them outside because it's summer. That cloth you hung on the line will become the reason why the problem will set out. <laughs> as innocent as hanging clothes on the line. He will use that to come. He's a spirit being. He can find a window. Any window, any platform, and he can come into your space. So you want to, be, you want to insulate your house from Satan? If it was possible, Adam would have succeeded. He dwelt in the garden of God. He was called to dress the garden and to keep it territorial integrity. Part of his job was to, he was the, he was the customs officer to ensure that contraband and aliens do not trespass the territory. He himself was amazed when the serpent was hanging. In, in, in Eden. How did the serpent get there? Oh. Okay. Let's go. Let me show you how Satan speaks before we start this journey tonight. You say it's Saturday? Okay. All right. Um, now, let's test our tools. Bro, strike. That keyboard, is it working today? Try the other one. Where's the other brother? Brother, try try the other one. Let's be sure that our tools... Because we are going on a journey this night. I know you've not met God for a long time. Today. Hmm. Wait. What I'm saying is not an amen matter. Your amen doesn't make it more valid. I commune with him in the night. Huh? He is willing to come. Not because of your amen. You keep your amen. What, what amen are you? <laughs> Young man, I say run a test. Don't discuss. Okay, so don't worry. I will tell you how to use it. But meanwhile, all those keys you people pl played now are wrong. It's not from there. It's here. So I will guide you until you get the sound from there. When that sound begins to play, don't worry, let's not, let's continue. Are you there? Yes. Okay, so let's go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. 
Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Stop there. You know, I told you, the reason for which uh, Satan may want to possess a vessel is because he wants expression. Satan, demons are persons without bodies. So in order for them to have expression, they need to take advantage of a creature that has a body. It becomes a house for them. When they have this house, they can function in this realm. That house becomes the reason for which they have legitimacy to operate in this three-dimensional world. This world was not designed for spirit. This one was designed for three-dimensional creatures. Yes, I'm educating you. I know this by the scriptures. This is not the world for spirits. <coughs> the world for three-dimensional creatures. Are you there? Yes, sir. For instance, when Jesus rose from the dead, Jesus said, Behold my hands and my feet. The reason why you can behold him is because he, he, has, he occupies space. He occupies space. Spirits don't do space. Are you there? Yes, sir. He said, handle me and see. The reason why you can handle him is because he has matter. Are you there? So it's a realm of space. It's a realm of matter and a realm of time. That's the kind of creatures that are here. They occupy space. They have matter. And they function with time. That's not the description or the frame of reference where spirits operate. Are you there? But it means I'm the one that has the license to operate here. If I set up an altar to a spirit, I become the entity that can provide legitimacy to that spirit being to begin to operate here through my altar. So when you see people dying in your family untimely, don't look for spirits. Look for the person that is operating the altar. Because that's the person that legitimizes the entrance of the spirit realm into the natural. The spirit realm is so mingled and so close to the material realm, it's not distant from us in terms of distance, but it sits in another dimension. But you can bring that dimension into this dimension through an altar. Are you there? Yes, sir. And the biggest altar that was ever set up in the Bible was Calvary. In Calvary, God made a legal statement that made irrelevant the error of Adam and restored the passage of humankind into the purpose of God. It was an altar that was set up that could achieve that. Are you there? Yes, so, but that's not where I'm going now. Stay with me. In the book of Genesis, chapter 3, the Bible says that the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. You, you still remember the Lord God? Who is that? Jehovah Elohim, that's the pre-incarnate name for Jesus. So the idea of creation is that the Father gave the commands and Jehovah Elohim created the substance. That's how it worked. That's the partnership that was in creation. Creation involved the Godhead. The making of man involved the Godhead. Redemption involved the Godhead. But I don't have time to show you the journeys of the Godhead through the scriptures. When the three members of the Godhead will need to work together to accomplish a task. So the Bible says that the serpent was more subtle. That means in the way God created the serpent, it had a superfluous ability in the area of subtlety, much more than any creature in the creations of God. And that's why Satan chose it. He possessed it so that he can take advantage of that is superfluous subtlety. Because he wanted to achieve a task, but he did not want to look as though he wanted to achieve that task. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Subtlety is a strategy. I want to do something, but I don't want it to look as if I want to do it. 
So he hid behind the mask of the serpent because the serpent had that endowment. And then he transmitted the spiritual energy on that endowment so that it was impossible for you to discern what he had in mind. Whenever Satan shows up in your space, he doesn't come as Satan. He doesn't want you to see his identity. The moment you can see him, ah, oh, he's busted. He hides behind people's voices, counsels. He hides behind societal pressure and laws. He hides. And then he puts you in a box and you don't know that you're already bound. And then you are giving thanks to God for your bondage. And the reason why all of this trouble came upon us is because we became a living soul. If we now go to the book of Colossians, you'll be able to understand it. Because the book of Colossians now reveals to us that if you are going to walk with God, it is going to be deliberate. Somebody say deliberate. deliberate. <laughs> if you are going to walk with God, it's going to be intentional. Yes, you will still come back from work and you are feeling so tired. You want to sleep, but you know that in order for you to gain some mileage with God, you need to resist that sleep and be intentional about gaining mileage. Every time men gain mileage with God, it was because they decided to become intentional in their, in their pressing, in their walk, in their navigation. Don't think you sleep on the bed and then God will come and say, Mary, Mary. It will happen only once in your lifetime. And that's when you are 87. <laughs> You're already old. The only ability to, you have is to make coffee. The Bible says that from the time of John the Baptist and until now, the kingdom of God suffers violence. It allows violence and only the radical that can lay hold on it. You want to sit down? Keep sitting down. So when I travel across Europe, what I see, I just see men sitting down and say, hey, we are here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ebenezer. <laughs> you don't know that you are bound. This is not how you were created. This is not the intention that God had in mind. No. The reason you are not aware it's because he came in the body of the serpent. He came with subtlety. He will move through your boss in the office and put you in a tight corner. He will move through the parliament and set up laws that will make it easier for you to sin than for you to walk in righteousness. He will move through the economy. Cause some people to bust the pipeline so that the prices of goods will go up and it will be difficult for you to obtain what you used to obtain before easily. Ah. Then when he has put you in that condition, then he will now open a door of compromise. Then there's a door here. Then that's when a fine guy with a Lamborghini will just come your way and say, I'm John. <laughs> And Satan will be telling you that <laughs> if you are not willing to suffer, to pay a price for him, you are not worthy of him. So you tell Satan in the face, I've seen the option you have made available, but now, just like before, I choose Jesus. Are you there? Yes, sir. I choose Jesus. It was in London. I finished a miracle service. So powerful. God moved. All kinds of healings. Miracles took place. In fact, the hand of God was upon me. Sometimes when it comes so strong like that, after the meeting, two hours, I'm still strong under the anointing. If you touch me, you go. If you touch, you go. There was a day I came home because there are inhabitants in my house. You know, If you come to my house, you'll be disappointed because... Who, me and my wife will go on the streets. We'll pick someone. You stay with us. Yes, you stay here. You, join us. You, join us. You, come. 
So you'll be disappointed. Say, oh my God, what kind of, yes, that's my own way. Are you there? Came back from church one day, the anointing was strong. I, I stood in the sitting room and the inhabitants of my house began to manifest. The power of God began to move. Demons started coming out of the inhabitants of my house. It continued like that for, only my wife can make it stop. So you can continue like that for two hours. If I send you to my room, most of you can't go and come out. Most of you. You'll be slain. Yeah? You'll be slain. Most of you can't come out. You can't go walk and come out with your legs. I know reality. God, there are many things God has not allowed me to say. So I was basking with glory. And uh, uh, our friends in, in London... They wanted to take care of me. They put me in a very good hotel, just like the hotel that you put me now. And um, I didn't know that a very beautiful lady has been seeing me. I will come out. People, so many people want to serve me. And then I enter big vehicles. So she must have gathered that. He's an African prince. I can see more I was coming full of the anointing. I was full of the spirit. And she, very beautiful English lady. I pressed the lift. And as I was entering, she ran into the, uh, the lift and told me how, how many degrees she had. We we're just moving from ground floor to fourth floor. She told me about her degrees and, and that she noticed she has competence in the area of dealing with stress. And based on evaluation now, she's seeing that I'm stressed up. <laughs> Oh my God, you are stressed. <laughs> she, she now touched me here. Me, my pastors were in the lift. I, I was not alone. Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about. She, she now touched me here. I said, oh, this mentioned the name of my condition. And, <laughs> and then when the lift arrived at fourth floor, I now realized we were on the same floor. Satan, after he, he boxes you in, he will now open one door for you. Then your heart will be tested. Yes. God will never make you strong without a test. Never. Then he will now he will open the door and say, well, uh, you know, the only way to move now is like this. And so that he will not look as if he's the one that no, it will it will look like circumstances, like situation, and this is the only way out. That's when you need to start talking. I choose Jesus. You need to start. Talk. You can't keep quiet there. I choose Jesus. I choose Jesus. I choose Jesus. When the gift of God began to grow on my life, so many people began to consult me. It's because we are online, I can't tell you details. Then you will see all kinds of people. Politicians will come to ask, am I going to win the election? And when you tell them the truth, I beheld the ballot, and your name was not on it. You know, a politician doesn't want to, you to tell him he will fail. Your name was not on the ballot. Any money you have, go and save it. Because you will, you will lose. And they won't believe me. They will go and consult other prophets. Then they will tell them, you will win, you will win. And then when they lose, they will come back. You see? So, that kind of engagement, you provide intelligence you know, to all kinds of people. And I, I can't go into details. In one of those days, one of the wives of those politicians now came. I said, God spoke to her. I said, God? The Lord? I said, yes, the Lord. I said, what did he say? He said, he said, you are the only man apart from her husband qualified to sleep with her. That was what <laughs> 
you, you are not there. Satan, in the day you eat of this fruit, ye shall surely die. I said, I'm sorry, you got the wrong preacher. I am a Puritan. If God did not show me my wife, I wouldn't have even married. I'm a Puritan. I'm not living for sex. I can live without it. I'm a Puritan. We don't play those, those games. Because God wants to saturate your vessel. Oh my. I will show you what it means for you to be saturated. Don't worry. When we start, I will show you here today. When it saturates you, these eyes will no longer be the eyes walking. A new set of eyes. You, you can see her and know her past, know her future. Not, not so that you can say it. He's just sharing with you because you are saturated. A man that violates sins against his body in fornication can never attain that level of saturation for God to give you his eyes. No. Never. So I will pray for you so that you will experience what I'm saying. The reason why I don't go close to people too much, if I, if, if I become your friend, hmm, some of these things I have will start working in your life. So if you are a bad person, it will still start working. So you will be powerful but bad. <laughs> are you following? That's the reason why I don't make friends. I suffered, I suffered past a man where before we became friends. Because men like this are few on earth this time. And you know, oh, yes. Yes. Good men are lacking on earth. Good men are lacking. Terrible people. All right. So look for strings and then give me, make it faint. I'll tell you when to increase it. Unfortunately, I cannot preach my message again. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, and God said that ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden. Do you notice that when the devil showed up, he showed up with a question first. He showed up with a question. The reason why he showed up with a question first was because this was how it was. Imagine that the serpent was seeing God speaking with Adam. He had video, but no audio. So God would now say, this is the trio, the trio of life. The meaning of what I just acted is, in the day, if you, you can eat of the tree of life, but if you eat this one, you will die. So Satan was checking the drama, but there was no, no audio. If you are watching a movie and I walk into your sitting room and I see one scene in the movie, can I tell the whole movie? The devil is a peeping spirit, but he cannot see. He has peeped and he has seen just one scene of your destiny. But there are so many gaps leading to that scene. He doesn't know. So his data bank doesn't have sufficient information. He will need to come into the space and get you to fill in the gap before he can develop a weapon to fight you. He needs your help to assist him to fight you. many of you have helped him. Because when he put you under pressure, you, you started talking. Then he was taking notes. Ah, okay. Oh. 
you communicated your frustrations to your friends and then he knew what you were thinking. He didn't know. He couldn't read your heart. You put pressure and you start talking. That's why you must get used to talking the word of God. You don't talk circumstances. You don't talk situations. You speak what God is saying. The Bible says we have in the same spirit of faith as it is written. He believed and therefore he speaks. I have believed and therefore I speak. The spirit of faith makes us to say the things that God is saying. But in spite of my situation, I say what God is saying. This is what the word of God is saying and this is what I say. He's not saying change the situation. He's just saying, say what God is saying. Say. So he comes with a question. That's the first thing he does. Because he doesn't have information about what you are processing in your heart. It's, it's past, your heart is passcoded, passworded. He can only pee. He cannot see. He cannot see your end. When he begins to see you pray, then he now peeps. And he sees that if you continue this prayer for the next 21 years, for the next 7 years, for the next 70 days, for the next 92 days, he sees that this is where you will be. Then he begins to look for how to form a weapon. And every weapon he forms is custom made. It has your measurement. It has your dimension upon it. It has your, your, the, the scope of your temperament upon it. It has, it has your specifications upon it. But in order for him to build an instrument that is that precise, he needs you to help him. So he comes with questions. It comes with questions. I pray that you will not supply the answers to the questions that he comes to ask. Can you see Eve? Eve began to supply all the answers. Yeah, next verse. Oh. And the woman said unto him, to the serpent, see, supplying all the answers. Supplying all the answers. He did not know the strong point. He did not know the emphasis of the dealings of God. He did not know it. And Eve began to fill in the gap for him. This is what the discussion we had. Satan cannot attack you without your help. He needs your help. He needs you to help him. The affliction that you have suffered, he needs your help. And the day you decide that I will not help you anymore, he becomes confused about your life. I will not. And I'm praying that tonight someone will rebel against the devil and say to him, I will not help you anymore so you know I was telling you about a wedding that I was it was unfortunate that I was the one invited to preach I told them that now that God has given you a home it is like the garden of Eden and Satan will come God will come. Satan will come. And I show them the language Satan will be speaking when he comes. I did not know that after we join them, there will be a crisis and the wife will run away. Amen. Satan came. Amen. Hallelujah. Meanwhile, when I preached that message, people said, what kind of, um, <laughs> what kind of message? Are we not supposed to be bright on a wedding day. I say you got the wrong preacher. If you want to be bright, there are preachers that do bright. I do God. 
She ran away. We had to chase her. Then we realized that they were helping Satan answer his question. They helped him. I choose not to help the devil answer the questions that the devil has asked. My hands will not enhance his activity. I choose not to help. When the pressure is upon you, don't speak to men. Speak to God. As a wife, don't just say, when he comes, now. It doesn't end well. Are you there? Yes, sir. All, all, all the women are shaking. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. Are you there? Yes, sir. Now, I don't have time to open all the Hebrew words in the creation of man. The words used there are engineering. That's for man. Engineering. The words used in your own eh? took the rib and made the woman. That word there is artistic. So the things that have reinforcement bars, the engineering tool, there is no way you can succeed over him in a battle. You won't win. You will not. When you go that way, you will hurt. We are we were built with rods and steel, men. That's the the words used there. Do you understand what I'm talking about? No, don't fight. That's not how to do it. When you're under pressure, talk to God. Don't talk to men. When you submit to God, God knows how to tame him. God will tame him. And a man that God has tamed is tamed indeed. Before you get married, develop yourself in prayer because that is going to be your tool. Your tool of engagement. And if you know the secret place, you will have a good home. Even your children that begin to manifest tendencies of demonic trends, you cut it off on time. It is only prayerless people that fill in the gap for Satan. When you begin to exercise yourself in prayer, you become a hard knot because you have been enlightened by the Spirit of God. We're going to take a moment to pray. My time is up. Sorry. Maybe I'll try to preach the sermon tomorrow in the service tomorrow morning. What's, what, what's the take of time? 11 a.m. Okay. So we have enough time to rest and then you come for a touch from God. Now, this is 20 minutes to 8. It means I have 20 minutes for practicals. In practicals, what we are doing is that we'll, we'll travel to heaven first. That's why you have a spirit. It can, it can travel. It can journey like mist into the heavenlies. And you can trap the dimensions of God. Only man was created having a spirit a soul and a body. Why? Because with your spirit, you are supposed to be able to interact with the spirit realm legitimately. And with your body, you are supposed to be able to interact with the natural realm legitimately. So man is built like a trans transformer. It's designed to be able to step down the technologies that are in the realm of God into the realm of man. Your soul is supposed to be submitted to your spirit. So that the things that are downloaded into your spirit can be interpreted in such a way that it becomes life applicable and you can implement it. Oh, Jesus Christ. I see the signs already. God is in the business of recruiting his army in this end time. He wants to change the face of Europe. When I move around your city, I see cat cathedrals built like temples high into the heavens. It means there was a time that Jesus passed through your land. But your skyscrapers have obscured the temples and the houses that have been built in his name. Because a new type of civilization has come. 
And that's why God wants to begin afresh with you and with me in, the, in Europe to colonize the land so that men again will do his will within the landscape. That's why you're here. We're here for the Grace Conference to contact the energy that comes by the Holy Ghost to do his will even when it's not convenient as a witness to all nations as we prepare the way for the master. Oh my God. In a moment of time, can you forget about your neighbor, the person sitting by your side, your friend, and you want to exercise your spirit. Zero in on God. Zero in on God. You may not need to stand if you believe that sitting is convenient for you. It's okay. Just take a good posture. Oh my God. Focus on him. Focus on him. Forget about the distractions. Forget about the people sitting by your side. Tune your heart. Oh, Masiko Bresco Falanto Ziga Bahite Bresco Folomon Shekila Ante Kude Iso Somenaite Brokeska Bakonda Liso Santoria Gemini to Brosketo Conde Labrila Ante Cosca Bellatua Isco Brante Bobojenai Lando Rosetela Igaito Brahma Santala He's looking for a young man. He's looking for a woman that will open up his heart, open up her heart to receive a touch, to receive the investment of his grace. He's looking for someone that will say, Lord, I want to go with you. I want to go the length with you. I want to travel with you. I want to gain mileage with you. Carry me, carry me, carry me on the wings of your spirit, carry me. Carry me, carry me upon the wings of your spirit. Carry me, Jesus, carry me, carry me upon the wings of your spirit. Carry me, Jesus, carry me, carry me upon the wings of your spirit, carry me. of your spirit carry me carry me carry me upon the wings of your spirit carry me Upon the wings of your spirit, 
We'll give you praise. We'll give you glory. In the name of Jesus. And I beheld in the spirit. And I saw the angel of the Lord released into this congregation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I saw an angel of God revealed in this service, and I could see this angel touching somebody's ears. And the reason why the angel is touching the ears is because the angel is healing your hearing so that it will be easy for you to hear from God. And as I speak to you, the person is being anointed now. The person is beginning being anointed so that you can come into that anointing. It's in the next 17 seconds, the anointing will be strong upon that individual. It is an anointing that will enhance your hearing in the spirit. In the next, oh my God, in the next 17 seconds. Father, from my left hand side to my right hand side, to the left, to the right, every part of the hall, that individual that you want to anoint so that the hearing will become easy. The hearing will become easy. I ask that you touch that individual. Touch that individual. Touch that individual. Let the anointing come strong upon his life, upon her life, upon his life, upon her life, upon his life, upon her life. Listen to me, listen to me. I saw some of you in the choir. And the Lord wants to promote you. In the next 20 seconds. In 20 seconds. The hand of God will begin to anoint members of the choir. There's a promotion. 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 Holy Ghost. There's a promotion. 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 There's a promotion in the spirit. The hand of Jesus. The hands of Jesus. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm seeing the, the angel is suspended over the choir. 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 Over the choir, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, is dispatching something. Ibo Korea biseke tamina, broske to kombe laite, isa mena Korea briska bonde, samba halaka lehuse kabaila. Your ministry is enhanced. Your ministry is enhanced. Your voice is enhanced. Your voice is enhanced in the name of Jesus. Now, come. Come, 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 come. Uh, line up. Line up, line, the line. In a book, now listen.
Can you shake me? Can you shake me? Hey. Okay. Do you sing? You sing? I'm coming. Now, I want to give you something. But my willingness to give you and you receiving it, they are two different things. In order for me to help you to receive, I will do this. I will I'll touch you like this. So he's coming now. He's coming. He's coming. Let your mighty hand rest on them. As you go back, you go back in power. Go back with the Holy Ghost. Go back with grace. In the name of Jesus. Now, there's one of you that God is, is giving power. 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 So, in a moment of time, the one that God is giving power, you receive that anointing. In the next 17 seconds, you receive power. You receive power. The one that God is giving power, it will be obvious. It comes stronger. It comes stronger, stronger. 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 Someone in the congregation. Someone in the congregation. The Lord is giving you the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy, you are in the congregation. You are in the congregation. And there is an anointing that is at work. It is entering your spirit. It is entering your spirit. It is, oh my God. So those of you standing, you can go back. Go back. Come. Lord, cause our voice to be heard. Now, anytime I feel like this, it means that the angel of God is touching somebody. It's not obvious now, but it will begin to intensify. Lord, intensify it. Intensify it. Intensify it. Intensify it. Make it stronger. Make it stronger. 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 Hey. You know, the Lord is strengthening your spirit. He's strengthening your spirit so that you can tarry in his presence. Is strengthening your spirit so that you can do warfare in the spirit. And right now, your strength in the spirit is being multiplied because the hand of God is resting upon you. Your strength is, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Yes, it's been multiplied. It's been multiplied now. It's been multiplied now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.
We have three prayer points. One, we want to tell God, I am willing to be commanded. Command me. So that my life will be perpetually within the scope of your purpose. Instruct me. Speak into my heart. So that I will always be in alignment with your spirit. Can you, can you call him? Can you ask him? I surrender myself for guidance. I surrender myself for instruction. I surrender myself for wisdom, for grace. Instruct me. Instruct me. Instruct me. Instruct me. Isoke la brande curia basquito monde. More casico pres cuba male y sela. There's somebody in the congregation your womb was tampered with. Your womb. Your womb was locked. And God is opening your womb. God is opening your womb. God is opening your womb. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Now we are going to ask God to anoint us. There's an assignment he has ordained for you to carry. And the anointing for this duty. We want to ask him. Ask him in a moment of time. For some of you, he planted you in the realm of business so that you can be available to push his agenda. For some of you, your call is into ministry. There is an anointing for every assignment so that you don't do it with natural power, with natural influence, but with spiritual power, with spiritual influence. Anoint me. Anoint me. Anoint me afresh. Anoint me afresh. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Father, tonight, we are asking for the anointing upon us. May it please you to stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand. There is a woman that God brought here. And the reason why he brought you here is because he wants to promote you. You've been in a secret place in intercession. And now... He wants to promote you. Ushers, if you can bring that woman, let me touch her. Pray for her. He has increased your ministry. He has increased your ministry. Meanwhile, you have been faithful. So that's why he's increased. He wants to increase your capacity in the spirit. Establish this new anointing on the life of your daughter. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Now, I will pray for the sick now, just for a moment. If you have pain on your body, you have a hearing problem. Don't worry, the Lord has not finished with you, sister. He has not finished. You will be mighty in his hands. You 
You will be very mighty. I see you. The fire, I see the fire of the evangelist upon you. Some miracles will take place in a moment of time. But I'm still checking to see. Oh. And Lapo Korea. Come. There are eyes beyond these eyes. So I want to give you eyes. Father. The eyes, the piercing eyes of the spirit that sees beyond the realm of the natural. Grant unto your servant such that when she prays, let her see. 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 In the name of of Jesus. Amen. Mm. All right, so, sister. That which ties you, I fight with it. I contend with that which has bound you. I contend with the chains that you have borne. Your heart is right. But I fight the bondage. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit descend upon you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Yeah, let it burn. Let it burn with greater intensity. Let it burn with greater intensity. Yes, all the cords, the chains, the fetters be broken. Thank you. Can you do something for me? Just oh, so, yeah. Thank you. Okay, you will sleep well this night. For that which is lost shall be found. Amen. He's talking to you. He said, for that which is lost shall be found. Amen. That which was taken shall be restored. Amen. 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 Mm. Amen. The flames will never leave until this night. The flames will be on you until Amen. that which is lost is found. Amen. Until that which was taken. Be restored. Ah, you see, he has come. If you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, this is the time to pray. <laughs> ah. 
Hey, make sure you ask him for something. The heavens are open. Make sure. Make sure. Boria si kameli ko beskombela ya. Luz que te bondo coria paha baha. Yeso se que brante curia amantala babos que ta baha yando. Curia mama yata. Escoboron se salica. Elia mantora caseti prescofe la mahando cobri raposkendo hesca bahayata preca bantoria sica bendele raboscate bando lia brascanda babose catalia eso some in acadia ibre ma cancela bonde balia sica prescado balia sica prescado rica sica mendali aya bosque de bonda y prosqueto bonde samina Ika seni monde, preskopela ansela, ika basanda bla. 